we need to talk. Here's the deal, guys. There's a lot of people on the internet talking about the Ford GT versus the new C8. Um, pretty much every one of those people talking about it doesn't own a Ford GT, doesn't own a Corvette, or maybe owns one or the other. I own both. So I feel like I have some sort of authority on this opinion, but I wanted to actually compare the two cars, actually talk about what the difference is between the two, and ultimately give my opinion of whether or not I wasted a lot of money on this Ford GT. So let's talk about it. All right guys, I'm gonna make you a deal. If you can get me 10,000 likes on this video right here, I will take my Ford GT and I will take it up to the nearest Corvette dealer that's doing the showroom tour and I will crash that party. Uh, the nearest that I know of right now is a Chevy dealer in Austin, which is like a 60, 70 mile drive from here. But if this video gets me 10,000 likes, I will get in that Ford GT, I will drive it up there and I will crash that party. In fact, I will not only crash the party, I will see if I can get parked next to the car and get a comparison. I don't know if the Chevy guys will like it that much, but the people there would love it. So get me 10,000 likes, hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, let's do this. Get me those likes. So first, let's talk about the specs. Um, the new C8, I'm talking about the base form, is 490 to 495 horsepower, depending if you get the Z51. Um, it's supposed to do zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds with the Z51 and it's supposed to cost, with the Z51, about $65,000. Uh, $59,900 if you don't get the Z51. So, the 2017 through 19 Ford GT also does zero to 60 in right around 2.9 seconds. It's got 647 horsepower, around 3,000 pounds, um, and it's got the EcoBoost Twin Turbo V6, where the new Corvette has the naturally aspirated V8. Um, and it's a little, little heavier than the Ford GT, but still pretty light. So on paper, performance-wise, spec-wise, uh, besides the two different cylinders, they're pretty similar. They're, they're pretty similar cars. I mean, mid-engine, rear-drive, um, American two-seater sports cars. They're, they're very, very similar. So... Um, if, if those are the things you're going by, um, then yeah, yeah, you probably would say that most Ford GT owners wasted their money if, if that's what's important to you. So let's talk exhaust. Here's the cold start of the C8. It's, it's pretty loud. Now, here's the stock V6 exhaust on the Ford GT. It's not as loud. It's also not as deep. So there's a huge advantage to this guy, the Corvette. Although I will say that the older Ford GT, the 2005-2006 Ford GT with the 5.4 V8, to me is one of the best sounding vehicles engines and exhaust systems ever, as you can see right here. So if sound is your thing, unfortunately the Corvette wins. So what about storage? Well, this thing's got quite a bit of storage, but again, this is a C6, we're talking about the C8. So here's some video of the C8 storage. And you can see it's got room in the back for golf clubs. It's got a frunk. Frunk. The Ford GT does not have a frunk. And it has room behind the seats. It has, it has some storage space. Here's the Ford GT's storage. You can put a suitcase in there. Did you? Yeah, totally. <laughs> the oh, There's there the is. trunk right there. So that is all the storage you get in a second gen Ford GT. There is 
uh, pretty much no storage. There's enough room in the back for like one bag of groceries or like a backpack if you're staying overnight somewhere. There is no room on the inside of the car. So again, storage, advantage, Corvette. So now here we are inside the 2005 Corvette and I, I wanted to come inside for this next question and that is build quality. Um, you know, if you, if you see I have a video that I made a couple of months back about all the things that are broken on this car, uh, I'm in the middle of fixing a few. But, you know, yeah, it's, it's a 15 year old car. It's got about 60 something thousand miles, but there are things about it that have fallen apart that really have nothing to do with the fact that it's 15 years old and has miles. The simple fact is the quality of the way some of the things were put together is just not that great. Like this, this visor right here that just literally fell apart because of the, the glue and the way it was put together. This, trim piece right back here that's surprisingly not falling down right now but falls down all the time this one uh, you know again it probably shrinks over time uh, in the hot sun but again it's uh, it's just kind of barely just on it it's not there's not like some sincerity in, in the way it was put together uh, when you look at the Ford GT many of you guys may not uh, really see how they're built and I get that they have a, a very private production facility up in Markham, Canada. Um, only the owners of the Ford GTs are able to go up there and see it. There's hardly any video of this place uh, on the inside and how they build it, talking about the process. They do that for a reason. Um, this is the place where they actually build the race cars of the Ford GT. So your car will start its life as a Ford GT and go down the assembly line, and by assembly line I mean it's manually rolled from station to station throughout the, the building. And then at a certain point they say, this is a race car, this is not a race car. And then it goes this way to get its street functions put in. If it's a race car, it goes this way to put its race goodies in. Uh, but it's, it's very much the same car. It is hand built. Every one of these cars is hand built. They only make about one a day. Where the Corvette, for example, uh, they want to make 30,000 of these in a year, the 2020 Corvettes, or I guess the C8 Corvette. They won't make that many in 2020, uh, whereas they're only going to make 250, maybe, of the uh, four GTs here in 2019, and it is every bit hand-built. I, I watched one of the guys uh, open and close the butterfly door and measure the gap on it for probably a good 30 minutes before he made another adjustment, did it again, and made another adjustment and did it again. It's crazy to see the build quality of these four GTs. Also, um, the paint quality, um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's the best paint in the world, but they have a finishing station in the factory where they are putting it under the lights and buffing it out. And there's hours and hours and hours that they spend on every car uh, buffing the paint to make it perfectly smooth because it's hand painted there in that factory in Markham. So build quality by far goes towards the Ford GT. Having said that, it's only been around for two years. No one really quite knows how it'll hold up long term, but as far as how it is built, uh, it's much, much, much better for the Ford GT. So again, I mentioned how they build the Ford GT and, and it begins life as a Ford GT of of one kind and then at some point during the assembly process they decide this one's gonna be a race car and this one's gonna be a street car. Um, so it is truly a race car that is just built for the street. The entire body of the car is a roll cage built in. Um, whereas if you take the Corvette, even the new C8R that's going to come out, uh, they, they take the street car, they built the Corvette to be a street car, and then they modified it to be a race car, whereas the Ford GT is basically a race car that they modified to be a street car. Um, so when it comes to the heritage of the racing uh, of the car and the purpose of why it was built, it was built to be a car to go back to Le Mans and win. It wasn't built to be a 30000 unit streetcar that can also go to the racetrack. So even though competitively, yes, they're going to build great race cars that will compete with one another, the purpose behind the build uh, is much better for the 4GT. And so I got to give that advantage to the 4GT. All right, now for an architecture lesson. Wait, I thought we were talking about cars. Architecture. 
uh, there's a design feature on each one of these cars that is interesting. <laughs> Uh, let's take the Ford GT first. I think that's the int more interesting one, and of course, it's the older one. Um, they have a feature called the flying buttresses. Flying buttresses. Flying buttresses. Flying buttresses. Flying buttresses. Flying buttresses. Look, these are just open. Yeah, the flying buttresses. So what does that mean besides just sound cool? Or maybe Ford just made it up. Actually, no, they did not. Here's what it is. Flying buttresses, okay? And they're flying, meaning they're, 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 the, the name suggests that they're, they're out here, they've got these, these open arches going to them, and they're, these arches are out in space, they're flying. So, the 2020 Corvette had to try to one-up the game, so they have the new hardtop convertible coming out, which again, by the way, uh, amazing technology, amazing engineering, and amazing that they can get this done. The convertible, I'm guessing, will be right around 70000 starting. Uh, absolutely incredible that it's able to do that. So what's that thing behind, right right back here on the, on the convertible called? They're calling it the nacelle. So what is a nacelle? Well, it's actually not quite architecture, but it's, it's supposed to be like the, the thing in a in an airplane engine, like the, the housing of an airplane engine. And so I guess they're like, uh, they're saying that the housing behind your head on the convertible is. <laughs> is that so they're calling it the nacelle? So the Ford GT has the flying buttresses, the Corvette convertible has the nacelle. So uh, unique to each, great feature for each. I love the creativity from each of these uh, design companies but advantage goes to the Ford GT because think about this this flying buttress open wheel design was released back in 2015 when they first showed the car this is 2019 2020s are about to come out on the lot nothing else has happened like it no one else has designed a flying buttress uh, on any of their cars so advantage Ford GT because the nacelle although it's a cool new name other cars have the same thing. The Ferraris have the same thing. Oh, ah, just got it! I think even though the old Pontiac Solstice convertible had the same thing. So uh, it's not a new design feature. All right, so let's uh, talk about the thing that you really came here to talk about, and that was price. It's the biggest divide in all the different comparisons. The base price of the Corvette, about $60,000. The base price of the Ford GT, about $495,000. Well equipped, you have the Corvette for about eighty. dollars The Ford GT can go up to about $650,000. Big difference. In fact, you could buy 10 base model Corvettes for the price of a well equipped 2019 Ford GT. So now, which color do you not get? I don't know. That That's a good problem to have, I guess. Cost of ownership, don't expect the C8 to do anything crazy. The C6 and C7s were relatively affordable to own. There's a little bit of Corvette tax here and there, but don't expect this magic uh, giant oil change price because it's a mid-engine car. This isn't a Ferrari or a Lamborghini of the 80s. That's not going to happen. Expect the same $50 or so oil changes you'd get in a Corvette or, or most other cars these days with synthetic. Uh, premium gas, things like that, that's all the same comparison. Um, so Corvette by far, cost of ownership is going to be best. Insurance, way cheaper. Insurance on my C6, very cheap. Uh, insurance on the C8 is going to be very cheap as well. Uh, 50 to 100 bucks a month depending on all your other factors. Now let's talk about the Ford GT. Um, the cost of an oil change is not cheap in the hundreds of dollars, not quite 80s Ferrari, but still not cheap. The cost of ownership, just in general, expensive. Um, maybe not as much as you think, surprisingly, but not not very good. Um, I'm actually somehow getting about 16, 17 miles per gallon on average, but then again, I haven't really been flooring it and driving like a maniac everywhere I go. Insurance though, that's where it gets a little weird. Um, given the value of the car, you have to pretty much get a named value insurance policy uh, rather than just a normal standard comprehensive policy. So you got to put a price on it. Let's just say that price is a million bucks. So if you wreck it, total it, and it's your fault, they're going to pay you a million dollars. They're not going to buy you another car because they, they can't. You can't just get another 2019 Ford GT. You just can't get one. 
So they'll pay you a million bucks. You actually could not go take that million dollars and go buy one because you can't buy a used one. Quite the conundrum. So you just have to put a dollar amount on it, what it's worth to you. Those types of, uh, those types of insurance policies are very expensive, thousands of dollars a year. Um, so for let's say uh, eight or let's say a million dollars, it might be five to ten thousand dollars per year for this insurance policy, depending on how many miles you want to drive and where you live. Uh, for five thousand dollars, you probably want to be able to drive it less than a thousand miles a year. So it, you're really kind of paying by the mile. Uh, it gets extremely expensive. So cost of ownership, price, obviously go to the Corvette. But that's not the full story. You know, the full story is that this is a very unique vehicle. It's a very low production, highly desirable vehicle that we are very sure is going to go up in value. Um, you look at the 2005, 2006 GTs, they are now trading for two to three times what the original sticker price was. Um, and they appreciated in value right away. They started going up and they made many, many more of those than they're making of the new four GTs, uh, probably about three times as many. Um, so you would expect the demand of this car to be even greater over time and values go up even more over time. So the base price for 2017, for example, is about 450,000 right now. Uh, auctions, legally sold ones, are now going between like 1.2 to 1.5 million. So you know, three to four times what they were brand new so great investment two years there's not too many things you can invest that amount of money in for two years and just sit on it and then and then make a three to four x profit so uh, in that respect the Ford GT is gonna win you look at the Corvette Corvette holds its value extremely well but it still depreciates you know that sixty thousand dollar car in three or four years might still be able to have a resale of thirty five to forty which is fantastic. Um, any other car that's 60,000 is gonna drop like a rock. So uh, the Corvette holds its value extremely well, but it doesn't go up in value. It's not an investment. You know, you Ford GT, you almost have to think of it as a piece of art that you're investing in. It's not so much a car. So to me, the Ford GT still wins overall. I get it, not everyone can just drop that kind of money on it. Not everyone's gonna be eligible to get one. Uh, but if you get a chance, whether it's today or in the future. If you get a chance to get a car like this, or one other very rare special car, like one of the McLaren Ultimate Series cars or a special edition Ferrari, something like that that's going to go up in value, if you get a chance and you can financially swing it, absolutely do it. To me, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to do anything close to this ever again. So we swung for the fences, you know, and, uh, I believe it was the right decision. So either way, I'll still end up with a C8 Corvette. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this guy, get a C8 Corvette, uh, keep this, the 4 GT uh, as a every now and then car. Uh, and so I get to have it both ways. How awesome is that? So got my two hats, got my golf hat, and uh, we'll keep rocking them. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video of me comparing the two cars. I, again, I, I haven't seen any videos from anyone comparing the two cars that's actually an owner of the two cars, or at least even an owner of the Ford GT. Everyone thinks the Ford GT owners just simply hate the C8. Everyone thinks the Ferrari owners hate the C8. I, I don't really think that's true. I think there are people that maybe are jealous of it, but I think there's a lot of people writing uh, this drama that doesn't really exist. So I'm proof to you that Ford GT owners, Corvette owners can get along. In fact, someone can actually own and love both cars. So definitely hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get notifications on my next videos. Give me that likes. Remember 10,000 likes and I'll crash that party in Austin at the Corvette show. And definitely share this video with whatever you'd like. And we'll see you next time. Right, but there's a little nook right here behind this metal foot plate and there's this little guy right here there's a you know, that's kind of 